We now have everything we need to handle a form submit event. Uh, so what that means here, and I want to update this a little bit, is I want to have uh, two text boxes. So we have maybe a little bit more complicated data than just a single string. Uh, and when we fill that out, when we hit submit, I want uh, that data to be gathered, put together into a single structure, and then it can be emitted up to some callback. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what it would like, what it would look like to handle forms. All right, so back into our code. Uh, I'm going to take this custom form and we're going to sort of like update this to be, well, a form. So this div, we're going to make you back into a form. Uh, so we have our text input. Uh, username, that's going to be fine. I'm going to have the username changed here. Uh, I'm going to add in one more text input. Uh, and we're going to make this, uh, let's make this one like um, a favorite language. Uh, so let's see, handle on change. Uh, we're going to need to update that. Uh, so let's do just copy you two. So instead of username changed, I now want this to be, uh, I'm gonna name this the language changed. Okay, we have our callback from, this is now language, um, which is gonna be a string still. Uh, we get our data from our cloned state. We deref and clone that, so that's here. Uh, we want to update this because we're not going to use the count. The count doesn't really mean anything to us. So we're going to have username and we're going to have favorite language. And this is going to be a string. Um, okay, so we have that. Okay, so data dot. Okay, so we don't, we want you to be favorite language equals language. Language. Uh, and then we set that. I don't need the button clicked thing. Um, and removing that, that's going to cause a problem because it kind of needs this on click, doesn't it? So actually don't want that to exist for our button and I don't need this button has been clicked. Uh, I don't even need that username. We just need the form itself. All right, well, the button's a little bit upset. Let's go find our custom button and remove the requirement for an on click. And we can remove this call back here. and an on-click handler. It's not necessary for what we're planning on doing, which in this case, this is going to be a form button. Uh, handle on change. Oh, this is now a language changed. OK, so you should be happy. Uh, here's, our, here's our lovely form. Um, uh, it doesn't really have labels on it, which could be nice to have. We have those names coming in. I could imagine us uh, adding that in there. Let's do that really quickly just to sort of uh, make it a little bit easier to see what, what we're doing. So we have this name coming in. Uh, let's just add in a, uh, there's a, um, I always forget what it's called. There's a placeholder. which we can then use as props.name. Did that work? Oh, yeah, that did not work. Um, trait bound. We have props here. We have the name. Oh, you need to be you need to be cloned. That's what it is. Okay, so now we can see our username and our favorite language in here. 
So the idea is I want to just write Brooks. I want to write Rust. Uh, I want to hit submit. And then I want the, the resulting answer of this to either be displayed out here or logged in some way. Um, okay, well, in our custom form, we can gather all the data individually. So when each of these things are updated, we are updating this data struct right here. That's great. But we also need to now like handle the submit. So that's going to be another, another handler. So we're going to do let, uh, this is going to be a on submit. Now we're going to have the event happen here, but I'm not sure we're going to care about that. Uh, now what we do want to, what we do want to have happen is uh, another callback to be passed in here. And we're going to emit that up as soon as, well, the submission happens. So we can maybe do, and this is not going to be data. We need, we need properties. And you need to be public. Um, for these properties, uh, I just care about the actual form data. So we're going to have form data is going to be an instance of this data. Uh, and then we're going to want, actually, we don't need as properties. We want um, on submit is a callback that it is going to be data is what we're passing through it. We are going to derive properties and partial equal. And that now allows us to take these in as properties here. Okay, so um, you're upset. Oh, because I don't have a semicolon here. Um, we're going to get this on submit. We don't necessarily, well, now we kind of know what we want to do with this. We want to take this on submit callback and emit the data that we have here um, when the submit happens. Um, okay, so we know what we need to do. We need to clone this. So let our uh, this is going to be our on submit. So um, form submit equals then inside of here. Oh, we the data we might be able to get away with. Um, let's see, where are we storing that? Uh, we have oh, that's in the use state. Uh, so we need use state also available to us. So we'll be able to get that out now. Uh, let's see. Okay. So here, let's first start by getting out the data. I dereference it, that gives us the data itself. Okay, great. Uh, type annotation needed. We need to know what type of event this is. Uh, let's head over to u.rs, uh, which will tell us what type of event we get with a uh, on submit. So that's gonna be in concepts, uh, let's see, HTML, events, On submit is a focus event. Okay, so now knowing that it's a focus event, uh, we also 
you know something else we need to do? Um, and I always forget this the first time. I'm just remembering it right now before we do this. Uh, the default action when you submit an event is to do like a get to itself uh, unless we set something like a method um, on, on the form itself, which even then we don't want it to do that. We want to prevent the default action. So we're gonna, that's the first thing we're gonna do is prevent default, which is exactly the same thing we do in JavaScript, which is on this event, there is a prevent default method. Just make sure you call it. Now it won't try to auto uh, submit the form when the button is clicked or when enter is, is clicked. Now it's just gonna do whatever we, we want to do, which is we're gonna extract the date from the data from the state. Uh, we are then going to emit out. So we're gonna do form on submit. And we're going to emit the data. Okay, so that's a lot of work to get this form up and running, but uh, we should now be having an error, and I see one down here, uh, letting us know that our main library is incorrectly using custom form because we now need to pass in an on submit callback to handle this. Uh, let's go ahead and do that now. So let uh, on, let's do like custom form submit. Oops. We're gonna create a new callback. Now we're gonna get the data here uh, and we might need to tell it what the data is, but it might be able to figure it out too. Uh, Rust Analyzer is a little bit iffy with when it comes to um, uh, macros. So we'll, we'll see if it, uh, if it needs that. And uh, what we can do is we could either store each component into state, we can throw it into state, uh, or we could potentially just log out each individual piece. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. We know it's gonna be two parts. We're gonna have a username and a favorite language here. Username and favorite language. Uh, so let's do uh, a log. Username is data.username. Yeah, it's not really figuring out exactly what that is. I see an unknown here. Let's go ahead and give it a type. Uh, ooh, and you don't know what that is. I need to make this public. So library can grab this. Okay, so now it knows exactly what this thing is. Username.data uh, or data.username. So we're gonna do another log and we're gonna say favorite language is, all right, so this should happen on submit, then down in custom form, we'll do a on submit. Um, up it's private field, we do need to make all of these public. Um, let's see, I can't, oh, I can't do the entire move out the dereference, which I don't really want to. So I actually want to clone this. But of course I'm cloning the state handle, which I don't want to do. So we need to first deref to get the, uh, the data at this point and then clone that. So there we go, we now have data uh, and now we can form on submit that. Okay, so this on submit is uh, not running, not being, not set up yet. So here on a form, I'm gonna do an on submit equals on submit. We have no errors. Let's go ahead and see if we were successful. Do 
Brooks and Rust. And when I click the button, hey, I got username is Brooks, favorite language is Rust. That's great. Now, another benefit of using something like on submit for a form instead of just an on click for the button is I can press enter at, uh, at these and I get the same thing. And it's true for any one of these. It's a little bit nicer for keyboard users. So you can just tab through the entire form, fill it out, hit return, and it just auto submits at that point in time. Uh, which is like, I gotta say, it's my favorite way of, of filling out forms. So I would try to always handle this when I, uh, when I create them. Anyways, uh, we have now successfully set up handling for a form. Uh, and uh, we're now capturing that data and it's available to the rest of our application wherever we want to use it. Anyways, hopefully this has been, this has been helpful for you. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.